Hey all, my name is Paul Borowski. I am the owner of Quality Business Plan and also an adjunct finance professor and also the author of McDonald's Financial Report 2021. So the purpose of this video is to kind of give you all a backstage look as to how I approach the financial report for 2021. And what I've done is I've created a financial model and this financial model is, is a template and I'll take all the, the different companies that I research, like for example, McDonald's, I'll research their last five years, 10 Ks, and then I'll put their financial information into my um, template and in my template, it'll be able to help me identify trends in the income statement, trends in the balance sheet. Also, be it will calculate financial ratios and help me analyze and identify some trends in the financial ratios. So the purpose of this video is to kind of give you an all and a sneak peek at the model that I use to write my fi McDonald's um, financial report for 2021. Uh, a couple disclosures real quick. First and foremost, uh, my approach to, um, so the purpose is to give you all a backstage look. Um, when I'm discussing McDonald's trends, I might be a little bit contradictory where I might say McDonald's is doing great with revenues in this section. However, their cost of goods seems to be out of line um, or it, it seems to be fluctuating higher, higher than usual for other industry competitors. So it might say, seem like I'm saying McDonald's is great in one section, but McDonald's is not so good in another section. And the reason for the contradictory um, activities and statements is that I am taking a look at McDonald's from the perspective of the line item, from the perspective of revenues only, from the perspective of their current ratio only or the return on act. Um, equity only. I'm looking at the company just purely based on that one line item or that one analysis uh, structure that that I'm using to um, help better understand the organization's finances. So just keep that in mind. Some of the statements may be contradictory. And then finally, the financial report that I'm going to show you or the financial model that I'm going to show you, it is not included in the purchase of my financial report for McDonald's. So please do not email me and say I didn't get my the financial model and it's because it doesn't come with it. You do get a, a PDF file and then the PDF file, you're going to be able to read through the, the my findings for the financial report. You'll be able to see the calculations and good stuff like that. Uh, but what you're not going to be able to do is modify those numbers. It doesn't come with the Excel file. All right. So without further ado, let's go ahead and sneak a peek at the backstage activities of McDonald's. So the first thing that I like to do um, is take a look at the executive pay for the organization, specifically for McDonald's right here. We've got this first gentleman, um, Christopher, I can't pronounce his last name, CEO. He's pulling it down about $1.32 million, which is pretty decent. And it's, it's not too high, not too low for a multinational organization such as this. We've got the CFO, Kevin. He does seem to be getting paid a little bit, a, a little bit light, a little bit on the low side. From my ex experience, um, you know, the CFOs have been for multinational organizations have been a million plus. And then we've got Joseph. And again, we've got some real interesting last names here. Uh, president of the U.S., he's pulling down 2.4 million. So now when I see the differentiated uh, if, um, incomes where Christopher is making 1.2, but the uh, president's making 2.4, that tells me that there are some other compensating factors going on here. They're making some money some other ways. And usually it's going to be with uh, uh, stock, stock options. And when an organization pays their executive team with stock options significantly, it's good because then it forces the executive team to really focus on the value of the stock at present and, and to really maximize the, the value of the stock because if the stock is if value increases their pay increases but also the value of the company increases as well however the challenge with paying the executive team with stock options is that all they all they may do is focus on maximizing the dollar amount of the stock right now so it drives up their pay immediately so it's more of short-term gain is where their focus as compared to long-term value where most of the stockholders they're in it for the long run and so that's you kind of like to see a nice little balance between you know short-term compensation and then you know long-term view 
I don't think the executive team, based on their pay right here from Yahoo Finance, that mixture is being accomplished from McDonald's. My most humble of opinions, though. All right, next thing I'm going to do is take a look at the stock price. In the beginning, January 20, we had a stock price dive, and I believe we all know why that is, which is going to be the pandemic grabbing hold in the U.S. that drove the stock prices down. Um, from that point in time, like most multinational organizations in this time frame, their stock price eventually started to climb and then level off. Next thing we're going to do is take a look at the dividend payouts. So dividend payouts. In 2016, McDonald's started their dividend payouts at about $3.61 per share. And that's for the year. Then they started, they continually increased their dividends dollar wise from, you know, 361 to 383, 419, 473, then the 504. This is a good thing that they are increasing their, um, their payouts um, dollar wise. However, what really concerns me though is that they're not growing their dividends um, growth wise. So if the growth rate for 2016 to 17, 6.09. Then we got 9.4%, which is great, even better 12.8% growth rate. But in 2020, the company really pulled back on the growth rate to only 6.5%. Compared to other organizations in their industry, <coughs> excuse me, the company is still doing great. I prefer, though, to see a not only a dollar wise increase, but also a growth percentage wise increase. That tells me the company is really taking care of their um, shareholders. And McDonald's, they're doing good, but they're not doing great, in my opinion. Next thing what I would do is I'll take, a, in my financial report, I'm going to go ahead and analyze four or five different um, line items for the income statement. And for example, for 2016, revenues from McDonald's was $24.6 billion. And then over the next four years, their income would continually decline, $22.8 billion, $21.2 billion, $21.3 billion. So you got a little bump here. But then in 2020, it's down to $19.2 billion. When an organization's sales are declining on, um, declining over the long term, that tells me that not only is the company not responding to what the customers currently need right now, but they haven't been responding to what the customers are looking for for a long time. This seems to show that there is a disconnect between the executive team at McDonald's understanding what their consumers not want and to be able to, to implement those changes in their business models and their product offerings. If this trend continues, then eventually the organization's net income, I don't care how much cost cutting you do, their net income is going to go negative. So McDonald's, for the long term, it looks like they got some problems because they're continually losing revenues over the long term. Next thing what I'll do is I'll take a look at the balance sheet for McDonald's. And again, I'll pull four or five line items and I'll analyze those in their financial report. An example of that would be for McDonald's, their cash position in 2016 was at $1.2 billion. They would bump it up to $2.4 billion in 2017. In 2016, um, 18 and 19 rather, seems like co the company is having a little bit of a cash crunch. Uh, 866 million, 898 million. And then it seems like the company may have taken out some debt um, or reissued some stocks for their um, 2020 because we've got a significant bump in their cash positions of $3.4 billion. And if you go back to their, their um, revenues, we already know their revenues are declining continuously over the last five years. So for them to have a bump in the cash position, it means in my most humble opinions, they've taken out some debt or they've reissued some stock. All right, next thing we're going to do or next thing that I do in my financial report for McDonald's is take a look at about eight or nine, 10 different ratios for the organization. In, in an example of, of an analysis for the company would be in 2016, current ratio was at 1.0%. And as, as we all know, the current ratio is simply the, the current assets divided by the current liabilities. And for us to get a 1.0 tells us that their current, ratio, their current assets are slightly higher as compared to their current liabilities, which is a good thing because it also tells us that the company should be financially solvent, at least for the short term. 
in 2008 and 2017, the current ratio jumps up to about 1.84. The closer it gets to two, that tells me that the company is not doing so good with managing their current assets. They're holding too much cash. They're holding too much inventory. They're, they're just, they're, they're not doing a very good, good, good job managing their current assets. Um, we, we like to see it closer to one, maybe even a little bit lower with this type of an organization that's generating revenues on a continuous basis. So when it gets to the um, 1.8 section, it tells me the executive team is dropping the ball here. Um, for 2018, it, they get a little bit better with 1.36. In 2019, I really like that current ratio, 0.98. The company makes money on a daily basis. They're selling their Big Macs. They're selling their fries and their Cokes and their, their whatever they're selling. They're selling that on a continuous basis. The company is continually generating revenues. They're generating cash every single day. Because they're able to do that, they're able to hold a lower cash um, cash position as compared to Boeing or something that they might sell 10 jets in a month or a week or a year. Who knows? But the, the amount of money coming in, it's in big chunks for Boeing. And it's, you've got to manage your, ca your cash a little bit better. You have to ha hold a current higher current ratio for a company like that. Whereas a Walmart, a Burger King, or McDonald's, a lower current ratio under 1.0 is acceptable and actually kind of shows that you're, you're really optimizing your, your current assets when you do that. So the company is doing really good in 2019 with the current ratio. And, and again, 2020, 1.01, they're still doing a pretty good job. I would like to see the current ratio under 1.0. That tells me that they're really, they're, they're really humming, their operations are going, and they're comfortable enough with their operations that they're able to hold a lower cash position. All right, so hopefully this information was helpful. And let's see here, where was that PowerPoint presentation? Let's see here. Yeah, so hopefully that information was helpful. And if y'all would like to go ahead and pick up my McDonald's uh, financial statement um, or financial report, um, just go over to my website at qualitybusinessplan.com forward slash McDonald's and you'll be able to buy the um, financial report from that web page. Also on the web page, I do give you all some additional th tips and tricks on how to um, you know, analyze some of the di different financial ratios and also the income statement and balance sheet line items. So hopefully this video was helpful. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up on YouTube. And as always, have a fantastic day. Thank you.